uh, can you say with ho how many students the school began and how uh, and how big it is when you left uh, big it was when you left um, when I left there were I think around 150 students and that was all age ranges I don't know how small it was when I was a young child is there just anything that that you don't like it at school at your school anything that you you would um, change if you want to change something we, we can <laughs> that's the thing no okay, but maybe there, there, are, that. there are some things that no you can't change because you know you they, they have to be that way and you know you just don't like them like, well, like cleaning or serving on the judicial committee then education happens and I was doing that in the field so every time I would watch it and think of him possible. and uh, they can definitely help people because the children very quickly learn to navigate the web and find things which interest them and when you've got interest then you have education. I took the experiment to South Africa. This is a 15 year old boy. This machine I, I play games like, like animals and I, I'm, I listen to music. And I Now CNN's Sanjay Gupta on assignment for 60 minutes. Take a moment and remember your favorite teacher. Now imagine that teacher could reach not 30 kids in a classroom, but millions of students all over the world. That's exactly what Sal Khan is doing on his website, Khan Academy. With digital lessons and simple exercises, he's determined to transform how we learn at every level. One of his most famous pupils, Bill Gates, says Khan, this teacher to the world, is giving us all a glimpse of the future of education. Two hours and work really hard on a text. Seminars begin by the tutor simply asking a question. We're looking at the most fundamental questions you can ask. What can we really know? What is virtue? Can virtue be taught? What is truth? What is justice? Can you be pious and wise at the same time? I asked him, uh, do you send emails? And he said yes, and they hop across the ocean. <laughs> This is in Cambodia, rural Cambodia. A fairly silly arithmetic game, which no child would play inside the classroom or at home. They would, you know, throw it back at you. They'd say, this is very boring. If you leave it on the pavement, and if all the adults go away, then they will show off with each other about what they can do. What does it mean to be a human being? There's something really wonderful about the fact that students do all this preparation in the privacy of their own rooms and then come together with this group of people and think through the problem again and see it from new angles and have their own understanding questioned. A good seminar is one that when you leave, you just, you're not the same person anymore. Something has changed and you can't go back thinking the same way you used to. As Aristotle says, there's pleasure in being at work and using all your resources and being human. And I feel like we really work on being human here. And it is the most satisfying, alive feeling. Or the laws in yeah. general. It sucks to have to keep up. We have 150 laws. It sucks to have to keep up with every single one and do everything right and always, you know. But, But I accept it as something that allows me to have freedom and to have... A school where I'm happy and to have my friends feel comfortable and everybody be respected. And at worst, it's a lesser evil. You know? Can't express how much it was a gift to find St. John's. I haven't made a lot of decisions in my life so far, but this was the best decision. Let's begin. This is my question. Do you think that Socrates has um, fallen in love with you? Which is what uh, these children are doing. They're trying to multiply, I think. And all over India, at the end of about two years, children were beginning to Google their homework. As a result, the teachers reported tremendous improvements in their English. <laughs> the story will continue in a moment. Thirty-five-year-old Sal Khan may look like a bicycle messenger, but with three degrees from MIT and an MBA from Harvard, His errand is intensely intellectual. In his tiny office above a tea shop in Silicon Valley, he settles in to do what he's done thousands of times before. 
We've talked a lot now about the demand curve and consumer surplus. Now let's think about the supply curve. He's recording a 10-minute economics lesson. It's so simple. All you hear is his voice, and all you see is his colorful sketches on a digital blackboard. In this video, we're going to talk about the law of demand. When Khan finishes the lecture, he uploads it to his website, where it joins the more than 3,000 other lessons he's done. In just a couple of years, he's gone from having a few hundred pupils to more than four million every month. Has it sunk in to you that you are probably the most watched teacher in the world now? Yeah, I, you know, I, 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 I try not to say things like that to myself. You don't want to think about it too much because it can, I think, paralyze you a little bit. So if we get rid of the percent sign, we move the decimal over. He's amassed a library of math lectures. 12 plus 4 is 16. Starting with basic addition and building all the way through advanced calculus. Right, we've been taking the limit of delta x approach to zero. It's the exact same thing. But he's not just a math whiz. The, the he has this uncanny ability to break down even the most complicated subjects, including physics, so biology, astronomy, time, history, medicine. This is a college with two campuses, a campus in Annapolis, Maryland, and a campus in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Students can transfer from one campus to the other. It's so beneficial to experience both campuses. I think most of us would say the seminar, seminar. seminar is the heart of the program, the central body of the program. How much reading do you do ahead of time? It, it depends what I'm doing. If I'm doing something that I haven't visited for a long time, you know, since high school, I'll go buy five textbooks in it, and I'll try to read every textbook. I'll read whatever I can find on the Internet. Let's talk about one of the most important biological processes. Sal Khan has tackled so many subjects that if you watch just one of his lectures a day, it would take over eight right years to... <laughs> you know, rapid improvement in all sorts of things. They said they've they become really deep thinkers and so on and so forth. <laughs> and... Uh, and indeed, they had. It becomes sort of an event. It happens twice a week. Do we read really intensely all afternoon and have a little dinner and maybe just start to discuss it? At 10 to 8, the bell rings and everyone floods into seminar. And there's just something so exciting about that coming together. People stopping and walking from all over campus, from the athletic field, from the dining room, from the dorms, all coming to the same place to pursue the same activity for the same goal. There's a different kind of learning that can happen there. And then sit down for two. I mean, if, if there's stuff on Google, why would you need to stuff it into your head? Steering for me, I'm the only one. So, you know, of course, you if you are lucky, have um, great parents to support you, great friends to support you, a great unschooling community to support you. But really, ultimately, uh, as an unschooler, I am in charge of my education. Another very real concern is feeling out of place in the rest of the world. And this might not sound like a huge thing, but for me, it is. Sometimes, and it's not entirely because of unschooling, but sometimes I just feel like an alien. So at the end of the next four years, I decided that groups of children can navigate the internet to achieve educational objectives on their own. At that time, a large amount of money had come into Newcastle University. I just feel completely out of place and out of touch. I feel disconnected with the outside world, and sometimes that's an amazing thing, because I'm not always the biggest fan of the outside world, but sometimes that can be really isolating and lonely. Number three, feeling less knowledgeable than peers. This one kind of does connect to the other two, uh, when sometimes my school friends get together and they talk about a lot of trivial school facts about, like, what the capital of... Cover it all. A huge time scale. Magnetic North is kind of the geographic location. And then let's say that this is the point X is equal to basic one. introduction. Light. If this does not blow your mind. You, you have no emotion. Did you ever think about putting yourself visually in the video? Look, if there's a human face there, especially a funny looking human face, then it's actually hard to focus on the math. 4,000 is 2,000 times 3 is 6,000. I don't have to shave, I don't have to comb my hair, I just press record, make a video, there might be spinach in my teeth, who cares? The format is so simple. Why does it appeal to so many people? I've gotten a lot of feedback. It really does feel like I'm, I'm sitting next to the person and we're looking at the paper together. And let me get my trusty calculator out. I'm 95% of the time working through that problem real time. Um, to improve schooling in India. So Newcastle gave me a call. I said, I'll do it from Delhi. They said, there's no way you're going to handle a million pounds worth of uh, uh, you know, university money um, uh, sitting in Delhi. So uh, in 2006, I bought myself a heavy overcoat and moved to Newcastle. <laughs> or I'm thinking it through myself if I'm explaining something. And to see that it is actually sometimes a messy process, that you know, it isn't always this clean process where you just know the answer. Um, I think that's what people like, the kind of humanity there. 
It all started in 2004, when Sal Khan was working as a hedge fund analyst in Boston, and his cousin Nadia, a seventh grader in New Orleans, was struggling with algebra. You know, you know that you may not like this law, but you know that without it, it will be even worse. So there isn't anything that we don't like and can't accept and can't change. It's either you can change something or you can accept it. There aren't any unacceptable, crazy, bad things going on. He agreed to tutor her remotely and wound up posting lessons on YouTube. They helped Nadia, but then an odd thing happened. Total strangers started using them too. I started getting feedback like, you know. I wanted to test the limits of this system. The first experiment I did out of Newcastle was actually done in India, and I set myself an impossible target. Can Tamil-speaking 12-year-old children in a South Indian village teach themselves biotechnology in English on their own? And I thought, I'll test them, they'll get a zero, I'll give them material, I'll come back and test them, they'll get another zero, I'll go back and say, my child has dyslexia, and this is the only thing that's getting into him. I, I got letters from people saying, you know, we're, we're praying for you and your family. That's pretty heady stuff. You know, pe people don't say that type of stuff to a hedge fund analyst normally. <laughs> so in 2009, Khan quit his job, and working from a desk set up in his closet, devoted himself full-time to Khan Academy. It's a non-profit with a simple but audacious mission to provide a free, world-class education for anyone, anywhere. If that goal sounds far-fetched for a guy working in his closet, consider what happened next. There's a website that... Have you ever thought of uh, changing to another school, or are you very um, content, comfortable with where you are, or have you been? Um, uh, I know that, uh, I know that I should have lightly thought about it, maybe because of more people, but um, I know that I'm really glad that I stayed at my school because I'm completely different than most other people and I know what my interests are. So. Venezuela is, and I just feel so ignorant, and um, that can be a really terrible feeling. Number four is feeling pressure to explain details about your personal life to complete strangers. Oftentimes, complete strangers feel that somehow you owe them an explanation of why you chose to unschool or what unschooling is like. This isn't something I usually mind because I really like advocating for unschooling, but it sometimes can be really wearing. Number five is finding friends slash needing a community. I was initially just thinking about it for preschool, for our youngest daughter. Like a lot of parents, I was skeptical. You know, what is Waldorf? I've never heard of it. Yeah. Well, I've thought about going to a public school because I've never gone to one, and... It was amazing. It was like, we get to come here, my daughter gets to come to this school. There's something you really learn how to see. I want to learn. I want to learn all sorts of things. Their willingness to puzzle around some of the, the deep conundrums around mathematics and physics just because of also the size, because there was nobody close to my age. If here's the situation, what do, we, what do we do about this? Like, let's sit down and think about this. What do we do? So I was, I would play with everybody, but I've, I have thought about going to a public school. But uh, I've just been using my kids recently called Khan Academy, K-H-A-N. Just one guy doing some unbelievable 15-minute tutorials. I was like, those videos for Nadia, not Bill Gates. I have, to, I, have to look, I have to take a second look at some of this stuff. That's right. But now that I think about it, I would never change. I would never change my school. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm done with school in general now, but... Uh... Right. Bill Gates, one of the smartest and richest men in the world, was using Sal Khan's free videos to teach his own kids. Two weeks later, I got a call from, from Larry Cohen, who's Bill Gates' chief of staff, and he, he says, you know, you might have heard, Bill's a fan, you know, I'm like shaking, I'm like, yeah, I heard, you know, <laughs> and, and he's like, if you have time, you know, I'd love to fly you up to Seattle, and then I was looking at my calendar right then, and for the month, it's completely blank. I was like, yeah, you know, I think I could, you know, fly in, you know, between like laundry and a bath, you <laughs> know, I can, I can just say. Since I went to Sudbury Valley, I don't think the thought ever crossed my mind to go to any other type of school. There's some children who have decided that they wanted to go to the regular school. Right? I mean, this is still sort of a weird thing. It's a small group of people. Everybody can meet with Bill. <laughs>
That was just two years ago. Today, with the help of more than $15 million in funding, much of it from the Gates Foundation and Google, Khan has been able to hire, with competitive salaries, some of the most talented engineers and designers in the country. The Khan Academy office has the intense vibe of a Silicon Valley startup. The team is working to create software they hope will transform how math is taught in American classrooms.